So in this work, we wanted to, to validate and study whether the measurement of brain aging has uh, is being ongoing in the field over the last years. Uh, in, we want to validate it with biomarkers of Alzheimer's disease and neurodegeneration. Uh, for this, we implemented and trained an algorithm using uh, structural MRI data from uh, UK Biobank cohort uh, to predict chronological brain age, to cr predict chronological age, which would be a proxy of biological brain age. Once we have this model trained, we predict brain age in four different independent cohorts, which in this case were our in-house cohort alpha. Uh, ADNI, uh, Oasis, and IPAD, which are three publicly available ones. And we did this in order to in, introduce independent cohorts and really validate it by studying the robustness of this measurement, whether the same results uh, adjust for, remain for the different cohorts. So once we had this, this predicted A brain age, we actually wanted to, as I mentioned, to validate it using biomarkers of Alzheimer's disease as over the field, as a, over the last years, uh, this measurement of brain age, which is uh, computed from a structural MRI, has been validated uh, in different diseases, such as normal controls versus Alzheimer's disease, uh, sclerosis multiple, and so on. But uh, it was really lacking uh, a validation with this type of markers. So um, in our results, and um, what we did was to study these associations, the we performed linear regression models, and we obtained that individuals which had were amyloid positive, which was captured by CSF amyloid beta or PET amyloid, amyloid PET, uh, had a larger brain age in comparison to the people that were amyloid negative. We also computed the 80 stages when we had a amylo CSF amyloid and PETA, CSF PETA, and we obtained that individuals which were uh, farther in the Alzheimer's continuum had also higher brain age in comparison to the ones that were in the previous stages. And regarding risk factors, we, uh, we saw that individuals which were APOE4 carriers had also a brain age delta higher than individuals which were APOE3 carriers, for example. And mm, APOE3 had a higher brain age uh, than the ones that had a point, that were a point two carriers. Although this difference was not significant, but we could see this trend. Uh, this was maintained for cognitive learning impaired and my cognitive uh, impaired individuals. So independent, we studied them independently and it was maintained. And regard, in addition, we also wanted to study whether this, this measurement of brain age uh, is, is associated with markers and specific markers of neurodegeneration. And for this, we used plasma and CSF neurofilament light. And we saw that a uh, higher brain age was associated with higher plasma NFL in both uh, in CS uh, MCU and MCI individuals. And in addition, we also found that cerebrovascular disease uh, measured by white matter hyperintensities was also positively associated with brain age. So we saw this, and in addition, we also want, wanted to study further whether there were sex differences regarding these associations. And what we found was that uh, females were the ones that were driving the association between brain age and plasma neurofilament light, and also in CSF uh, neurofilament light. So we could uh, say from this study that we validated this measurement of brain age uh, with biomarkers of Alzheimer's disease and neurodegeneration, and that there are different sex, there are sex differences in the trajectories of brain aging, which are good to be further, o sea, to be further studied. Yeah. So currently, I'm continuing working on the brain age part uh, because now we have developed this brain age measurement, which is a global biomarker, but I, it's. I think it's of interest and the way to go because um, aging trajectories are heterogeneous. So it's not a single trajectory uh, of brain age. So now I would like, we are working in developing different models to try to disentangle these different trajectories of brain aging. So, and, and studying the associations with different biomarkers, 
genetic risk factors, and so on, to try to understand uh, until what point we can see on an individual basis uh, how is this brain evolving and, and whether a person, for example, has a brain aging that is older than expected, but is because of cardiovascular risk factors or because Alzheimer's disease, and then being able to relate these trajectories in the brain to see the changes in every imaging data.